Hey guys, and welcome to a tour of my studio space. So first things first, this isn't a studio, it's a studio space, as I just said. And the reason why I say that is just because technically this is just a basement. There's some curtains hung up, some lights, and of course some audio gear inside of it. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. The first thing I wanna take you through is my drum set. So let's just dive right into that. Now, I already have a kit tour video where I go in depth across the entire kit, left to right, through hardware, shells, and cymbals. So with that being said, I'm not gonna cover anything that I covered in that video. There's two reasons why. One is I already have that video and you can check that out. And the second reason is the shells of this kit along with some of the hardware is gonna be replaced fairly soon. So outside of the studio tour video in the future, I will be doing another kit tour. It's gonna to follow up this video that will go more in depth with the new gear that you see in my upcoming videos. What I am gonna take you through here today on this acoustic kit is just gonna be the minor symbols that I've added to this kit since doing my first drum set kit tour. At the time I did that kit tour, I was exclusively playing TRX and since then, I have been replacing my TRX symbols with Mino symbols and just upgrading the set. So the first thing we'll, uh, we'll look at here is just this guy, my China symbol. A lot of you already probably know what this looks and sounds like from the unboxing video and from my review video where I took a deeper dive into what this is. So you can find all of the videos I've been referencing. You can find links to those in the description below. Now, getting back to this, this is a 20 inch Byzance traditional sandblasted equilibrium China. It's a vented China and it is a signature series China. So that means that it, this is a concept model created by Minel in partnership with Matt Garska, the drummer from Animals as Leaders. So working from right to left, the next symbol we kind of come to here is this uh, this right crash. As of late, I've had a 19 inch medium thin crash here. It's a, a Byzance traditional 19 inch medium thin. But uh, that symbol recently cracked and the replacement is in the mail that I'll be subbing it out for. So in the meantime, I've had this placeholder. This guy here is a 20 inch dual crash ride. It's a Byzance 20 inch dual crash ride. and. Uh, and yeah, so let's mo keep moving along. The next thing I will talk about is this guy down here. This is just a 12 inch uh, Minel Byzance Classic Customs Dark Stack. The stack itself is two uh, vented symbols. The top symbol, I guess, would technically be like a vented splash. And the bottom symbol is kind of curled up at the edge, so you could call that like a vented china. And that's pretty much it for that guy. Then moving on left to right is my Byzance 21 inch polyphonic ride symbol. Now the polyphonic ride and the equilibrium ride, I unboxed in the same video and then I did a review of both of those symbols where you got to actually hear isolated what they sound like and I talked about sort of the features of the symbols themselves. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can find that video, those multiples in the description below. So moving left to right, there's only one more symbol that I'm gonna talk about briefly here that's a minor addition since the first kit video and that's this guy right here. This is simply a 10 inch Byzance dual splash. That's been pretty much it for the new additions to the kit as far as like my new Minel symbols go. And yeah, so moving right along, I wanna take you over to my electric kit and we'll get a look at what's going on over here. So this is my practice kit. This is where I actually do most of my playing and rehearsing for covers or performances, or even just using this as like a creative facility to work on music for the bands that I'm working with or whatever's going on. So I spend most of my time actually playing at this kit. The reason why is, well, there's two reasons. The first is uh, just out of consideration because this basement isn't soundproofed and I do have roommates to worry about. And then on top of that, you know, without being soundproofed, there's some neighbors as well. So, uh, so I do spend most of my time over here and that that way, when I do need to get on the acoustic kit, there's no real issue. Now, with that being said, the other reason, the second reason why I like to use this kit so much is just, I feel that like, especially when it comes to the writing side of things, this, it gives me a better sense of, it's not as messy, it's not as loud. I can have everything that I want in my ear with a very clean mix, and I can, using the signal flow that we're gonna cover in a second, in my laptop, integrating all three of those pieces together, the audio units, the laptop, and this, the brain, and of course the kit itself, I get just all the tools that I really need to be able to best write, whether it's in MIDI or actual audio or whatever it is. So I don't know, that's just why I've come to always really use Roland kits. The first one that I was on was a uh, TD-15, and now this kit is a TD-25KV. Uh, the kit originally actually came with a second rack tom. It's in storage right now. The reason why is just because, of course, a lot of you probably know what my acoustic setup looks like, which is just a snare, rack, and a floor. Sometimes I'll add the second rack tom onto this kit, and I'll add like maybe like a, a stack 
sample or a bell sample, uh, something I can play around with that just adds like some more pads to the set if I want, you know, some more alternative sounds. These are dual triggered pads, of course. So the rim itself, you can apply a sound to, you can assign a sample to, and then the, um, the mesh itself is a different sample. If I want like maybe two different samples on that additional rack tom, I can maybe put a stack on the, the rim and then hit the center, the mesh itself, and get maybe a bell tone. That's probably the most common reason why I would add that second rack, rack tom to this config. But essentially, this is the kit. This is the electric kit. Now, uh, following this up, I'm gonna take you now right into the actual audio chain, the signal flow that I have down here, is the, what audio units I'm using in this rack case over here because this is pretty well integrated with that. So let's go and take a look at that now. This is a 30 slot rack case. I'm not really using most of it. It's actually sort of from my performance days where I was spending a lot more time playing with bands. At one point I had it almost entirely filled with just like bands equipment. This has been my essentially like live set for a while. The couple units you see in here, it's not much. I don't need much. In the cases where I played with bands, we would fill this with digital guitars we were running. We'd have the amp sims in here. This was always used for in-ear monitoring because it was my case. So because of that, being the drummer, I'm usually responsible for the in-ear rig and the back track. So I've always taken that on in the projects that I've been a part of. So that's really what this rack case has been used for. Uh, and it continues to be used for that here. It's essentially my monitoring system that I use live. I just now use in this studio environment to film these covers and to practice and to live stream down here. So the components I have mounted starting at the top, this is a Art SP 4x4 power conditioner. It's really just a fancy power bar with a meter on it. Um, there's nothing too crazy going on here except for like the retractable lights. But I mean, that's about it when it comes to that. These guys, are they're pretty cheap too. As I mentioned, and I'm gonna continue to mention, all of this gear, everything you've seen in this video, plus more that I haven't covered, I will include in the description below. You can go and check out all of this stuff and moving right along. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna look at, these two Sennheiser components here. The one on the left is a EW300 IEM G3. Uh, this is the base for my in-ear system. So this is just a transmitter essentially, and then it will sync wirelessly to these packs. You can run two packs with the same signal in stereo, or you can run two mono signals to two different packs. I have in the past when live performances sort of split up two mono signals to myself and maybe a guitarist that doesn't have an inner system but for now it's really just I run it in stereo off of one pack no big deal and the other uh, the other audio base that I have here is this guy this is a EWG4 uh, base for a lavier mic it's a Sennheiser base again um, it's just essentially receiving the signal from the lavier mic around my neck right now so we're actually using this to record audio for this video and I use it to record audio for just about all of the talking parts of my videos that I do down here so really that's just the lesson videos for the most part. And yeah, that's what's going on with these two units. Moving on from the wireless bases, this is a uh, Behringer XR16. It's a digital mixer. So I use this in all kinds of different applications. At the moment, what I have going into it is this, uh, this is just a uh, eighth of inch stereo cable to two mono quarter inches that are into two different tracks. This I use to get any signal from my laptop into my monitoring signal flow so that I can put in in-ears or I can cable uh, some ears over to the over to the electric kit, whatever it is. And then essentially I have the electric kit coming into this currently, of course, and then whatever else I want to send into it and then get back out. It's really just for monitoring though. This unit itself, I don't use it all for recording. If you want to use like one of the versions of these uh, digital mixers for recording, you have to step up to the XR18 because that guy actually has like a USB connection to a computer and you can run it as if it was an interface sort of thing. But I do have my own standalone interface that I use in conjunction with this digital mixer and I just sort of, I don't know, you have a lot of options when you have a digital mixer like this plus an interface and you can really send signals wherever you want, however you need it to be. Now the last thing as far as like audio units in the case is this guy. This is my Tascam 16x8. It's just an audio interface. There's nothing crazy about it either. It's extremely cheap. It's extremely affordable as far as audio interfaces go. A big part of the reason why it is is because it's only USB 2. It's not Thunderbolt. It's not 3. It's just a very basic audio interface essentially. It works as a standalone mic pre as well. So in the front it has 8 XLR ins. In the back it has 8 quarter inch ins and then it has another uh, 8 quarter inch outs. So there's 8 outs and 16 ins total with, uh, with 8 of the 16 ins. Uh, XLR pre's in the front. And then the last thing in this rig is just the bottom itself I use as storage. Um, all of my boom stands that I use for the mic set are sort of just down there right now chilling. There's some old hardware. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing really crazy about that. It's just kind of a storage space. So uh, so that's pretty much it for what's inside of this case. For transporting this guy, there's lids for the front and back, of course.
first as any rack case goes you just put the lid on the front you can leave all the cabling how it is so anytime you go to like a venue if you want to if i want to set this up in a way that's like monitoring for me or for band members or whatever i've got going as far as the gig goes um you just cable it all set it all up put the lid on bring it to the venue plug it into the wall and you're good to go you're done so moving to the left from the rack case i have actually i have four of these this is an uh omega guitar cab uh, these are dummy cabs so there's no there's no cones inside this was the back line for one of my former bands it kind of just formed the logo of the band across each side of the stage we kind of rolled with this instead of scrims so uh so there's four of these two of them are here one's here the second's behind it and then uh in storage on another side of the basement i have the other two just hanging out right now with blankets over them kind of thing yeah so really they're just bookshelves essentially there's wheels in the back i don't know in the future when i get involved with another project i'm just gonna swap out the uh the front screen with either just something blank or maybe a, another band's logo or something and then i'll just have a back line ready to go the band that used this back line also used this rack case and in the rack case we had all their amp sims so everything was done digitally as far as guitars go that's why we didn't have like actual cabs it was just it was just essentially just scrims but we liked the idea of using omega cabs instead so that's what that is on top of it my mic set so if you want to come a little bit closer we'll check out what's going on up here so this is the set that I use to record the drum set now that I have been recording the kit in uh, in my newer covers. It's not complete. Two of the mics I've lent out to a friend of mine who is currently using them and I'm going to get them back. I know I picked the worst time to film a studio tour when I don't actually have all my equipment here, but um, no big deal. I'll just sort of overlay, as you're probably watching right now, the uh, those mics in one of my videos. The mics that I'm referring to that I don't currently have on hand are Sennheiser 421s. I use them for my toms. Then I have two SM57s, one I've put on my snare, the other one I I use just to sort of amp up the the crash ride i find that uh my two overheads are, are panned pretty far right and left and they don't really they don't really get enough detail especially the articulation like stick articulation when i want things like a bell stroke for that polyphonic or for that 20 inch dual crash if that's in the center so i just put a uh, sm57 over that no big deal i've also used 57s on uh, the equilibrium before because it is a lower volume china but yeah so for overheads i have two of these uh, audio technica at 2020s i mean technically these are great for more for vocals the reason why I have them is because if you watched like my older how I make my drum covers video from from a while ago now I guess we're coming up on about eight months ago in that video I talked about how I used to use two AT 2020s in conjunction with my electric kit to record my videos so I used to have I mean, I mean I still do have them I used to use samples of my drum set and I would play the covers over in the electric kit and then I would put the samples of the shells underneath a live recording recorded cymbals and I use two of these to record the cymbals. Now these are great for recording cymbals if you're only recording cymbals. That's kind of what I've learned recently since I started recording my set and they're not going to be my overheads much longer. I'm trying to figure out what to sort of move onto, but at the moment that's what I've been using for overheads. Really a lot of guys just use one of these in the center of the kit over the kit and then something on the kick and you can get a really really great like full just like a single mic mix off of that. So yeah that's what I have for overheads is two of those. Uh, this guy here this, it's a short beta 58 uh, this is the mic that I use. I don't use this in the covers. This is the mic I use for most of my talking videos when I'm upstairs. Uh, I just kind of have it down here with the rest of my mic set. And then lastly, on my kick drum right now, I'm using this. This is a, a Shure Beta 52A. Very, very common kick mic. It's a great kick mic. And uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the for the mic set. Also up here, I just have, of course, some sticks hanging out. And then uh, these are the, the wireless packs for the in-ear rig here. So I can just, you know, plug my, uh, my in-ears directly into that phone strap and then I have a volume knob on here, strap it to my belt and I can play at the kit kind of thing. I guess the last thing I'll mention while we're over here too, I use elastic bands to tie all my cables. So how I do this kind of is like, it's cheap. It's way cheaper than cable ties. So I just buy bags of elastic bands at the dollar store for like a buck. Um, you take the elastic band like this, you can, uh, you can take it, you wrap it around the cable like that. And then you just take, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna pull it through like that. And I'm gonna wrap it around like this. And then I'm gonna pull up one side of the a band on the other side, tuck it through, pull, and it's tied. You're good to go. You can just kind of whatever. Right? It's just cheaper than uh, than buying legit cable ties, and you never run, you never run out of elastic bands. And even if you lose a couple, who cares? Right? They're a buck. So so yeah, that's what's going on in this corner of the studio. Now we're gonna move on. Next, let's take a look at the lighting and the curtains that are a fairly new addition to the space. So let's uh, let's get into that. 
So if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that these curtains are definitely a newer addition to this space. Along with the lights, we'll cover the lights in a second, but just taking a look at these curtains right now, they're super, super simple. It's uh, these curtains are available on Amazon. They're essentially just really bedroom curtains that you would put over top of a window. They're $20 a panel. I have 10 panels in the space to, to completely enclose us like this. But I do have some extra curtains that I will be using to uh, to curtain this this last wall. Eventually, just haven't gotten to that yet, but, uh, but eventually it will be completely black all the way around. They are retractable, like you can just no big deal, move them around. The the way they're mounted is I just took pipe and two by fours or scrap lumber really. So like up here, there's just like a piece of scrap lumber hanging from the ceiling, drilled a hole through that that was the size of the pipe, uh, put the pipes through it, so whatever, and then put the curtains inside the pipes and that's all there is really to it. It's, it's really simple, really quick. I like how they are retractable, of course. And then you can take these pipes down and you can take these curtains down in like less than 10 minutes if you wanted to completely remove it like they were never here. It's like 10 minutes and they're gone. A little bit longer to step back up because the way you have to actually put them on so that they're threaded into the spaces between the lumber is a little bit different than just taking it down, you know, stripping it real quick. And yeah, I love the way that they look. It was about time, really, right? Because like there was, it was for so long that this space didn't look like this. And I don't know, my patrons really helped me make this possible. Like having those additional funds come in to to really fund this, to fund a lot of the upgrades here is because of my patrons. So I can't thank my patrons enough. As always, I can never thank my patrons enough. And then the last thing I'll mention too is because they're retractable, like I can retract these and then I can set up cameras farther back here to get a wider shot of the kit, even though it looks like the space is a lot smaller, right? And in my covers, I have been doing that. So when I shoot from this side, the side that I'm standing at right now, and I get that, that typical angle where you kind of see my left side that you see throughout most of my cover videos, I actually open these up and put the mic farther, or not the mic, sorry, put the camera farther back in here and then vice versa on the other side. And, uh, and that's just because of two things. One is it looks great. It allows me to get the wider shots, even though the space looks smaller. And then two is, uh, as a lot of you probably know, I only own really one decent camera that I shoot with at the moment. So if I want multiple angles, I have to do them all in separate takes. And if you've been wondering about that, then that answers the question. I have talked about that a lot in other videos and my Q and A's in my, in my first video, breaking down how I make my drum covers. But essentially, yeah, every angle you see is a different take. Well, however many angles you see in a video, if it's five, then there's five takes. If there's six angles, then there were six takes, whatever it was kind of thing. So, so that's how that works. And that's how these curtains work. Now I have them listed along with all the other gear description below you can check it out you can grab some curtains of your own like these if you have a, a similar sort of setup that you were trying to insulate like this and uh, and yeah that's it for curtains so we've got two more things to check out inside of this tour and then you pretty much have a really good idea of what's going on down here. Now the second last thing we're gonna take a look at is the lighting that I use to actually illuminate the space. I don't use any sort of professional lights at all. I don't know really anything about lighting to be honest. I barely have scratched the surface into the audio production side of things. I can say fairly confidently that I'm a pretty good drummer, but as far as the production on these videos go, I'm so new to all this. Despite the fact that the channel's been on YouTube for seven years, I only really took it seriously in the last, I guess about a year now so I'm still learning a lot these lights were a cheap temporary quick fix down the line I want to slowly upgrade more cameras or lights and get something that's a little bit more professional grade instead of just home lamps like these are so I have four of these towers that are in all four corners around the space around the room that I'm sure you've seen throughout this video and throughout the other videos that I do in this space just all four corners are set up with these uh, with these tube tower things they are IKEA lamps you can grab them at IKEA the title of them is Vidja, V-I-D-J-A. There's five bulbs inside of each of these Vidja lamps around the space, and those are the first light. So the second light we're gonna take a look at is just this one over here. This is the lamp that I have sort of strung up above the drum set. I don't know the name of this lamp, and I couldn't find anything online about it. I've had this lamp, and there's another one in the space we're gonna take a look at momentarily, but I've had these two guys for a long, long time. I got them at Ikea years ago. They were like 50 bucks. I think it was actually like 50 after bulbs so they're probably even cheaper than that. I'm not sure, I can't remember. But yeah, essentially like I just strung it up. Like literally there's just cable on this side and then that is like an old, like literal cable cable. Like if I was to plug that cable, I don't know what the name of it's called, but it's the one that goes into the back of old televisions that actually have like a cable receiver instead of digital. Um, so it's kind of a heavy duty cable and that's why I used it just so that I could keep it up there. And it's literally just strung up to the duct, right? Nothing too professional going on down here. Outside of, the, maybe the, maybe my playing, outside of that, everything else is, uh, is 
pretty strung together. So yeah, we're still learning, but that's what I use above the kit. And I've found that having this above the drum set really lights the cymbals so well. I mean, like the cymbals look gorgeous ever since I put that up there, especially for those overhead shots where I do in my lesson videos um, and sometimes in the covers. That's worked out well there. I do have two of them. There's one more right over here. It's the exact same lamp. There is four bulbs in both of these. And yeah, this kind of lights the drum set from behind as well. This one works really well beside the electric kit for when I'm live streaming. Cause where you're kind of looking at me right now, that's sort of where I have the webcams set up for my Patreon live streams throughout the week as I'm learning my new covers and my patrons are watching online kind of thing. So yeah, that's it for the lamps. And then the only last light that we're gonna take a look at are I have two strings of Christmas lights on, sorry, second last, I have one more I forgot about. But I have two strings of Christmas lights just hanging from the ceiling Ceiling, no big deal on either sides of the kit. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, I think I've had these in the videos pretty much since the beginning, at least since I was doing my own. Cause you know, the first, I think six or so covers, I had somebody else film and edit and we were doing on location. Uh, but since I started doing my own videos, these guys have been in just about every video. I don't know where I got them. I don't remember. I don't remember how they, how much they cost. It's just basic ass Christmas lights, right? Like they're just white bulbs. So just one more thing we're going to check out directly above the drum set. I have this guy here. That's just a dollar ram lamp that Lindsay gave to me because she took it out of storage and didn't really know what to do with it and asked if I wanted it. And I, I clipped it up there. It works really well actually at getting light on the snare drum. That's kind of what I use it for is like illuminating the front of my face here and then the snare drum while I'm playing. So I don't know, just another little thing to have as an overhead to bring the kit a little bit more to life. Last thing I'm going to say about the lights are the, uh, the bulbs inside of all these guys. So I had to figure out like I wanted something really white just because it's a lot easier to have like a really white light on me for these videos because then it's just simple when I'm manipulating color and when I when I bring it into my actual editing suite to uh, to adjust things. As long as I made sure that on the package of the bulbs that I was buying for each of these lamps, it said 5,000 Kelvin. I mean, I think it can, you can go up to six or so. But again, again, I can't stress this enough. I don't know anything about lights. Still brand new to all this. But I got 5,000 Kelvin bulbs in everything you see here. I went to the store. I went to Home Depot and I bought uh, I bought bulbs for every single lamp all at the same time. So all of these had different bulbs in them over the years as I've been adding and subtracting lights. But then I went to Home Depot as when I got this new, these new curtains and these new lamps. And I just got like a bunch of lights, a bunch of bulbs that said 5,000 Kelvin on it. So it was nice and white and, uh, and redid all of them at the same time. So it's kind of more uniform. And the last thing we're gonna look at is some of the equipment I use to transport my drum set and whatever else I need when I go out with a band or go to play a show. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so this is my drum boat. I can fit half my kit in here. So opening this guy up, I have... See, that's the other thing too, actually. This wasn't built by anybody to be specifically used for drums. Uh, I got this for free off a friend years ago. I cut the foam and out of it to make these like slots where I could put these, uh, these shelves. So this is just like an old bookshelf that I repurposed to be dividers so that I could put the kit in here. Um, I can fit all my hardware in here. I can fit my floor tom, my rack tom, my snare drum, and my throne can also fit. I have a couple little cubbies over here on the side that I can put like little odds and ends. And uh, and yeah, this is what transports most of the kit. Uh, my cymbals do not go in here and my kick drum does not go in here. So the kick drum I have uh, a hard case for and then my cymbals I have another hard case for. This is the cymbal case that I use. It's a SKB cymbal vault. Um, Super simple and like really common, nothing crazy about that. And then along with this drum boat and everything that goes inside of it, a case for my kick drum that I put on top of it and the cymbal case that you saw, I just have some odds and ends like a toolbox, kick pedal case so I don't, I, I can't put the pedals in here. Well, I can fit the pedals in here but I like to put my Speed Cobras in there, the plastic case that came with it just because it's like molded for it. It's a little bit better on the pedals. They're not kind of flopping around in here with the rest of the hardware. And then outside of that, of course, the, uh, the rack case itself comes with me me, as is you saw me kind of put the doors on earlier that's what happens there just put the uh, the lids on the front and back we're good to go we're good to travel where we need to go to so that's really been it for a pretty extensive look at the space that I use to make our videos that I store all of my gear in really well most of my gear and yeah so I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to let me know by hitting the like button if this is your first time checking out any of my videos then well this is kind of a weird place for you to start watching my videos because there's a lot here that's sort of based on the, the 
assumption that you have contacts for my other videos. So go check out some of my other videos and then maybe hit subscribe <laughs> if you're new. And, uh, and then lastly, of course, you know the drill. If you want to support the channel, Patreon link, description below, merch link, description below. You can connect with me further at my social media pages, which are on the screen for you right now. And as well, again, in the description below. Last thing I'll mention along those lines too, in the description below is direct links to every single piece of equipment in this space, as well as some of the pieces of equipment that I covered in my office tour video, which I guess was a couple months ago now, but you could take a look at my actual PC setup and some of the gear that I use to edit the videos and what's going on as far as, uh, as far as, as far as what's going on inside my office. So all that's in the description. Go check all that out. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and I will see you guys all very soon with something new.